It just shows that there's a big divergence right now between the U.S., you know, Main Street and Wall Street, put it that way. I mean, stocks have been in a, in a corporate recession for a while, but the American, the individual, has been doing pretty well with wage growth, with uh, job, you know, job growth, obviously, with housing prices, with cheap gasoline. Um, it's going to promote re uh, retail sales, service industry, et cetera. So for all the news we have, I think right now that whole vortex of gloom and doom is starting to, uh, you know, sw uh, fray a little bit at the seams. Well, in light of that, in light of that, you know, showing signs of fraying there, I mean, are there indications and I guess signs that equities are oversold in the short term and we could be in for a further bounce? Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, I, I definitely could see us getting back up, you know, up 6%, 7% um, uh, from, from, from the very bottom. Uh, that said, we do need some type of fundamental, a real fundamental other than fear to drive that next leg. Because right now, uh, it seems like investors are very comfortable with like 16 times earnings with, you know, multiples going down as much as they have. So in the S&P, that would translate to somewhere in the middle, middle 1900 zone uh, before we really would need a narrative shifting fundamental to move that market higher. So, Larry, if we were to see that short term bounce there, what would what would be your strategy in this type of market? I mean, would you be buying in or, or selling out? How would you be positioning your portfolio? You know, it, it just it depends. Um, I haven't changed my portfolio a whole lot, except in the U.S. Um, I would look for a chance to sell. Um, even if we continue to rally, um, I would stay overweight the large cap stocks in the U.S. But anything other than that, I would I would pare that down. I still remain convicted that um, on an unhedged basis, just like I said in December, to buy Japanese equities and followed by European P and equities. And again, I say on an un unhedged basis. So um, that's what I would do. But I do still think the liquidity is going to continue to run in Japan and in Europe, not here in the U.S. So, Larry, uh, if you say buy on hedge, I guess that means you're bearish on the U.S. dollar. What you know, with uh, central bank liquidity uh, probably doing a lot more in Japan and, and euro, why, why are you bearish on the on the U.S. dollar? You know, I hate to be so pedestrian, but back in December, um, I reported that you know I'm going to be an outlier and be bearish on the U.S. dollar because I just saw so much bullishness from everywhere, and and, and it just seemed like there was no end to it. Um, I, I just think that the, the dollar has a valuation problem. And I think either we're not as health, healthy as, as people think or Europe's not as bad as they think. I think it's just overshot. And I don't think that the U.S. dollar is going to have a huge correction. But on the other hand, I do believe we'll, we'll finally or eventually see some stability and see the dollar come back down a little bit, especially against uh, the European uh, crosses. Uh, Larry, it certainly seems like markets recently be, have been sort of signalling this sharp deterioration in, in economic activity. So either, you know, they mispriced and they need to correct themselves or, or there's some sort of unknown event that's about to sort of derail U.S. growth. Do you believe that these fears of, of this so-called U.S. recession are, are a bit over, overdone, though? You know, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, recessions... Um, that, that's history, and it's not necessarily true that recessions can only, la or I'm sorry, periods of growth can only last six to eight years. Um, and clearly, our economy has shifted so much into a service sector as opposed to a manufacturing sector, a lot more global oriented. I do believe we, we still have room to run. But what I think could take down this market or keep this market in the mud would be the fear that we've seen. And I think that fear could. As crazy as it sounds, I think that could become a self-fulfilling prophecy that everybody is so bearish that it keeps stocks um, in the dark. It keeps them undervalued. It keeps company. It, it promotes caution from uh, companies. So eventually, it will it will hurt uh, Main Street as well as Wall Street. And I hope that doesn't happen. Um, I hope it was just an anomaly that we've seen over the last six weeks. But. That's the one thing that could take us down. Mm. What about um, the oil sector and the energy sector? Because a lot of that data recently related to oil and gas continues to look uh, very weak. Obviously, those energy prices, you know, keep moving lower. Uh, this deal, this so-called deal, I guess, disappointing the market in terms of a production cut there with OPEC. Do you see energy continuing to, to be a major drag? 
Yeah, you know, the thing we have to say about oil prices is that the interday pricing that we see is largely emotional based. There's not a, it's not being backed by a whole lot of fundamentals right now. A lot of news headlines cross the tape that aren't necessarily true. And you, you consider the fact that about 2 a.m., uh, crude was trading up around $31.5 on this news. And um, I think the market just got back to reality and said, we need to see something happen. Like, it's not like 2013 where the market's going to run before the data says so. The data needs to say so first. Um, and, and also, we do have to keep in mind that last week we were down around $26 a barrel. I think 26 and a half might be the low, but we were lingering down there for a few days. So for it to retrace down to a little bit below $29 in the day, to me, doesn't worry me. I don't look at it day to day.